Greetings. Well, young sir, what now? Shall we ride boldly forth to adventures new? I never took you for a romantic soul. But, as it happens, a romantic soul is just what I need by my side right now. What, here? Now? Aren't we leaving? Ah, that's just the thing. Here we are, about to ride off into the unknown. Well, who knows what fate has in store for us? What if we should fall as heroes on the battlefield? How could I depart this world with a quiet heart, never having known true love? I'm a little worried about you, sir. Aren't you getting overheated inside that armour? Look, I can't just go off and get my head chopped off somewhere without first winning the heart of the girl I love. So are you going to help me or not? Well, affairs of the heart are what I do best. I'll be glad to help you. So what do you want me to do? You, Hal, shall be my messenger of love. You shall bear her a letter and a gift from a secret admirer. But why me? It's not like you to be bashful, Sir Hans. You can just go and tell her, um... Certainly not! Carolina is different to the others. She was educated in a convent and needs to be handled with kid gloves. Romanced. I must court her secretly. It's the latest fashion in France. And who is this Carolina? The fairest maid that ever walked the earth. Carolina. The butcher's daughter. You must have noticed a divine creature in the marketplace. Unless you're more interested in barnyard animals. Carolina. I do know her. She's a pretty girl, all right, but, um... Well, a little below your station. Love knows no station but the heart. And you keep your peasant eyes off her. Your task is simple. All you have to do is get hold of a necklace fine enough to grace her lovely neck. I did have one that I inherited from my great-grandmother. Unfortunately, not anymore. What happened to it? I lost it playing dice at the inn. But you'll get it back for me. You're a smart lad. I'm sure you'll figure out a way. And I'll reward you handsomely. Oh, all right then. Is there something else I should know about this necklace? I lost it at dice in the Ledechko Tavern when I was there to see... Well, that's not important. So, some dice player from Ledechko won your grandmother's valuable necklace. Haven't you learned anything from losing to Zdena, the bathhouse wench? My great-grandmother's. And, as it happens, I have learned a trick or two. But that fellow has the luck of the devil. No doubt he'll still be sitting there, swindling other folk out of their hard-earned groschen. Oh, uh, what's the use? All right, all right. I'll go to Ledetsko, find this diabolical dice player and see what I can do. Though I'll probably lose my shirt to him. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. See you later. What else to you, sir? Are you the one who played dice with Lord Capon? Played and won, lad. Fine noble he may be, but he can no more throw dice than I can read Latin. I can't disagree with you there. But look here, have you still got that piece of jewellery you won from him? No, I don't. Some noble rode through here and we had a game or two. Only them dice kept falling his way. I was lucky to keep my boots. He's got the necklace now. Did you know where this fellow was heading? He was waiting for someone here, but when they didn't show up by midday, he rode on. He mentioned something about camping by the bridge over the Sassau River, that one before the charcoal burners camp. You might still catch him there with a bit of luck. There aren't many fords along the river on the way to Sassau. Can you tell me anything else about him? Fine gent he was, well dressed, on horseback. Had quite a lot to say. Seems he saw a bit of the world. And he had some interest in looking dice. You said they fell well for him? Aye, no wonder. Fine dice they was, made special. 
all shiny and whatnot. That's all I need to know. I'll be with you. After something, I'm afraid my friend here won't tell you much. Your friend? Oh, I'm very sorry. And, um, well, I don't want to be insensitive, but I was hoping to get something from him. My master's necklace, which he won at Dice. Your master? Who would that be? Well, Sir Radzig Cobbler of Scalitz is my liege lord. I'm Henry, but just now I'm helping Sir Hans Capon with a, um, a, a private matter. Those are weighty names in these parts. I'm Sir Anselm of Donkey, in the service of... Well, that's not important. I'd like to give you... That is... I'd like to ask you for your help. I don't think I can help you. I've got a pressing task of my own to deal with. I understand. But we can help each other out. You see, I think I know where that necklace might be. You do? Well, I'm all ears. The thing is, this is all my fault. I got held up on the way to meet Alphonse. By the time I got here, I found him like this. Ah, God have mercy on his soul. Amen, lad. I was heartbroken and enraged by turns, tearing my hair and cursing. Alphonse was my good friend, and it pains me to know he was only here on account of me. I brought him into a certain business matter to negotiate with some people, and he agreed. And this is how it ended up. When I finally pulled myself together, I took a look around and found some tracks. I followed them to the camp of those very brigands that Alphonse was supposed to negotiate with. Nah, you can't trust anyone these days. So how can I help? You can pass yourself off as Alphonse. Get into the bandits' camp and find that fucking murderer. And when you do, You'll find what you're looking for. And how am I supposed to recognize the killer? Ask around. I don't reckon anyone will admit to stabbing him in his sleep, but you might pick up some clue. You could have a look around for that necklace. Now that I think of it, they stole other valuables from him too. Silver is silver, though. I won't recognize anything. Didn't he have something unique? A signet ring or a chain or...? No, not that I can... Oh, yes, he did. Dice. He had a set of dice made specially in Prague. It was his pride and joy. They were red and gold, bright and shiny. Not the kind of thing you'd overlook. What can you tell me about Alphonse? So they don't catch me out if they start asking questions. Indeed. A few details should suffice. He was from Slani, but lived in Prague the last few years. He advised people very well too. He helped them to deal with problems of all kinds. Yeah, he sounds like a man of the world, but I've never even been to Prague. I'm not sure I can fool them. You can always change the subject. He was an ardent dice player, God forgive him. And he spent some time in Moravia on the service of Prokop of Luxembourg. But that was ages ago. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If one of them killed Alphonse, he'll know I'm not him. No, no. They never saw him before. So whoever killed him surely took him for some passing merchant. Are you quite sure they don't know him? Aye. He moved in altogether different circles, among decent people. That's the very reason I asked him for help. So I reckon the best thing is for you to introduce yourself as Alphonse, have a snoop around, and come back to me when you find out anything. Is there anything else I should watch out for while passing myself off as Alphonse? 
The main thing is to look and sound like a noble, not a peasant, a commoner. So dress the part. No rags or rusty iron. What do you know about the brigands in that camp? Actually, they're not just ordinary bandits. It's a robber baron and his band. Sir Ehar Baron Bilovitz. Some of his vassals and maybe some commoners. They came here in the hope they'd have a better chance of keeping their heads. Why don't you ask some of the local lords for help? I'm sure the Sassal custodian would lend you a few men. <sighs> There's nothing I'd like to see more than the lot of them strung up. Only I have a task that conflicts with that. And as for the custodian, I'm pretty sure Sir Sebastian is in league with their heart. What was the purpose of Sir Alphonse's negotiations? I'll need to know that. Look, Henry, you'd best avoid that subject if at all possible. Just find the murderer for me, get your necklace, and I'll take care of the rest. It'll be a bit hard to avoid that, since it was supposed to be the entire purpose of his visit. True. Well, Alphonse was supposed to talk Earhart into moving his robbing raids towards Benishoff, especially holding up merchants' wagons heading for Prague. In return, he was to offer a reward of up to 12,000 groschen and safe haven in Pilgrims. I see. So you work for someone in Pilgrims? No, neither Pilgrims nor Benishoff, nor Vlasheen for that matter. It's a bit complicated. Damn politics. My word, the whole thing sounds like quite a twisted affair. So are you going to help me? I'll help you. I'll have to go there to look for the necklace anyway, and this seems as good a way as any. Thanks a thousandfold. And for the love of God, don't get caught. I'd never forgive myself if another man lost his life on my account. If it starts to look risky, take to your heels. I'll bear that in mind. Looks like he died without a struggle, maybe killed in his sleep. They took everything he had, money, jewellery, even his boots. Someone was searching for something here. Were they out to rob him of everything he had, or something in particular? Could it be someone was trying to get rid of something here? I'd be right in assuming this is the encampment of Sir Earhart, uh, Baron Bilovets. You must be Sir Alphonse, eh? All the way from Prague, eh? Prague, yes, quite. But I travelled via Guren, thinking it the less hazardous route. Comparatively. Oh, I. The roads ain't safe at all these days. There's all sorts of rabble waiting to rob unwary folk and even kill them. Indeed, indeed, I concur. One must be wary, well, cautious, even, when traveling. Right then, but you'll have to wait a while. Sir Earhart is busy at the moment. No matter. I shall just, uh... Ah, but it's easy to pass the time here. There's always a dice game going on, with nice things being wagered. 
I had my eye on a fine pair of gauntlets and some old piece of jewelry. Mm, jewelry? You say? Oh, that's right. Just go and see old Blaha, the fellow sitting at that table there. He can read, write, and do sums as good as any scribe. And other things, too. He keeps things in shape here a bit. Thank you. I may well do that. I was told I could have a game or two here until Sir Earhart has time to see me. Aye, he's got his hands full at the moment. You must be Sir Alphonse, eh? I'm Blaha, Sir Earhart's servant. I take care of things here a bit. Including dice? It has come to my attention that there are interesting things being wagered. True enough, we've got a fine pair of plate gauntlets. Two necklaces, yeah. one of them's a lovely piece, so a good sharp sword, and some other with? things, I don't remember what. The custom here is if you want to play, you've got to wager something to join. What do you used to do before all that? Do you really think it's appropriate to ask your Lord's guest to pay for his own entertainment? Since you put it that way, sir. No, perhaps not. You want to play right away, or...? Why wait? I'll play now. No beating around the bush. That's the way. You'll play against Noggin now. He's not the brightest, and he ain't a good loser.
I have good news for you, Sir Anselm. I know who killed your friend. Who was it? It was old Blaha who did it. He does their writing and counting for them. How did you find out? From the necklace. All right. I'll take care of it from here. And I owe you for helping me. Here, Henry, take this. I'm sorry I don't have more on me. But if you're ever in Prague, come and look me up, and I'll see you're well taken care of. It's been a pleasure, Sir Anselm. Godspeed. God bless you. What troubles you? I've got that necklace. Excellent news! I'm not going to ask you how you did it. Here's a reward for you. Now you can carry on with your next task. I want you to sneak the jewellery into Carolina's trunk along with this letter. Can't I just hand them to her? You cannot! Under no circumstances must she find out who sent them. Otherwise, the whole secret admirer ploy is fucked. Oh, and by the way, Henry, watch out for the butcher. He keeps a very close eye on his daughter, and if he catches you sniffing around, well, 
May all the saint preserve you. Once you've delivered the things, wait a day, and then come back and see me. God be with you. Be praised. What brings you to me? I delivered the things as you asked. I already know. My spies told me everything. She was wearing the necklace this morning as I asked in the letter. So you'll go to the rendezvous with her? Certainly not. I'm not going to pounce on her like a bull in rutting season. Her feelings must be allowed to mature gradually. Meanwhile, you'll get a potion for me. I thought you didn't believe in witch's brews. This is no witch's brew. It's an absolutely tried and tested elixir called Musk of Infinite Allure. There's a fellow in Sassau who sells it and he guarantees its success. Musk of Infinite Allure? <laughs> Sounds irresistible. All right, I'll try and get it for you. I'm sure I can rely on you. Here's some coin for your cost. Good day to you. What do you need? I've heard you know of some irresistibility potion or whatever it is. Ah, oh, naturally! Okay. Musk of infinite allure! An age-old recipe, maybe even things. older, tested by Moses himself. Moses? Or how do you think he managed to get his people to follow him through the desert for 40 years? It's extremely potent. Yeah, so it would seem. How much do you want for it? Who do you take me for? The wisdom of the ancients isn't something that's bought and sold in the marketplace. Did Jesus charge for his miracles? But since you ask, how about this much? That's not much. Really? All right, double then. What? Why? You... Oh, why do I even bother? If you like, I can mix the elixir for you in exchange for a small favor. This is a matter that demands experience and knowledge of the philosophical arts that only a few possess. It's not a task I can trust to just anyone. But to your apprentice, you can, right? See, you read my mind. get any sleep. I just won't get any sleep.
can't stay here. I can't sleep again. What are you doing creeping around like a God bless you. What Everyone troubles has you? To carry a light at night by law. I got you that potion from the charlatan. What charlatan? He's a man of learning who even cured the Pope of impotence. But thanks, Henry. I really appreciate your help. Once I drink this potion, every woman will faint at my feet. But I'm only interested in one. The fairest creature on God's green earth. Yeah, the butcher's daughter, I know. And then what? A rendezvous. She and I, under the cloak of night. And you shall be my herald of exalted words. You will hide and prompt me from a book of poetry. I'll do what? Here's a book of poems. I'll need a little time to get ready. Meanwhile, you can learn some poems off by heart. You'll prompt me. Learn poetry? Me? That sounds... Well, not exactly... Stop wasting time and get to it. Come back to me in a couple of hours. I have to get dressed up and groomed, and it'll take a while before the potion takes effect. See you later. Are you ready, Sir Hans? Henry, something, something's gone wrong. Open up. I'm not going to talk to the door. That potion tasted rather odd, and now I have a feeling my face is broken out. How do I look? No offence, sir, but you gave me quite a fright. It looks as though you've slept with your head inside a wasp's nest. God's holy breaches, I knew it! And it's nearly time for my rendezvous with Carolina. What am I going to do? Ah, surely you're not going to give up on account of a few pimples. If Carolina doesn't appreciate your charm, she's not worth the effort. Do you think she will? Even though I've got a face like an ass? Ah, you'll sweep her off her feet. You'll see. All right, Henry. I'll do it. Let's go. Tell me, Henry. How many girls have you had in your life? If you've had any at all, that is. Well, there's been a few, but I'm sure I can't compare with you. Ha! <laughs> Very true. One day, plays will be written about my amorous adventures. Comedies or tragedies? That might depend on how things go tonight. There's another very pretty girl living in this house here, but she's already got a suitor. Since when has that ever bothered you? Since the time her fellow threw me head first into a dung heap and kicked my ass for good measure. It seems your future subjects don't hesitate to take a stick to you when it comes to minding the women folk. I doubt he would have done it if he recognised me. I was, um, incognito. We're almost there. You'll hide behind a gravestone or in the bushes and don't budge from there, otherwise you might scare her off. Hide, Henry. Time to get started. How do you know it's her who will come out and not someone else? She got the letter and necklace, didn't she? She knows that I'm... That is, her secret admirer is coming. <laughs> 
And what am I supposed to do? What do you think, Dalt? Prompt me from that book of poetry. I can't see you. Your most ardent admirer, fair maid. Aha! Uh -huh. And do you have a name? What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would still be a flower, wouldn't it? Hear you. To love and be forlorn is like night without a dawn. To be close with naught to say, like winter frost in May. To love and be forlorn is like night without a dawn. To be close is not the same, like intercourse in May. No! To have lips and yet kiss not is like leaving grain to rot. To love without consummating is like unsown fields in the spring. To have lips and yet kiss not is like a leaking chamber pot. To love without constant mating is like nuns all feel in the spring. Psst. What on earth are you saying? What's that hissing? It's a, a feral goose here in the bushes. I shall love you then, my dear, as long as you lie with me here. If you'll not give your all to me, no longer shall I bide with thee. I shall let you drink my beer, as long as you, uh, buy one for me. If you'll not give your ale to me, no longer shall I buy for thee. Jesus, Henry, what kind of yokel nonsense are you babbling? Me? You're the one who's babbling? You're an odd one. I've never heard such peculiar poetry in my life. Where on earth did you come up with it? It's, it's the latest fashion in France. You've done it off harm. Better shut up and leave it to me. How did you like it, dearest? Er, uh, well... <laughs> It was, um... Father is coming! Hide! Who was that talking? If it's some dandy again, I'll gut with my billeting knife. I didn't hear anyone. Did you hear what he said? Oh, I have a bad feeling about this, Hans. I think we should... Are you still there? Still here, my love. How could I ever part from you? Father's coming! He'll kill you! He will not, because it'll never cross his mind where I'll be. Henry, it's time for me to claim my prize. Whatever happens, cover my back. There you are, you seducer. Now you'll see how a butcher protects his daughter's honor. Buy me time. You got some explaining to do, you bastard. What are you after, you bastard, sneaking around an honest citizen's house in the dark? I went to mourn over the grave of my great-grandmother. Oh, yeah. Then what are you doing right beneath my window, eh? No, the question is, why are you trampling on great-granny's grave, eh? Enough of your horse shit. One more word, and I'll have you. Ah! What are you doing here? Oh, my darling. Get out! Get out or I'll call Papa! My sweet! How can you be so cruel? Hey! What was that? What was what? That noise! I'm sure I heard a strange noise. We're here in the cemetery. Maybe restless spirits, what do you reckon? 
I swear it came from the window of my own house. Well, what's that got to do with me? Someone's been creeping around after my daughter. I come out and I find you here. Quite a coincidence, eh? So, out with the truth. You're quite mistaken. I've never laid eyes on your daughter, and if she looks anything like you, I'd rather keep it that way. Why, you fucking... What do you think you're doing? Climbing in here, uninvited? Ma chérie, I came to court you. Then go and court me from the courtyard. Don't try to make a fool of me. I heard it clearly. What was that? Are you all right? It seems to me you're hearing things other folk can't hear. That's not good. You're saying I'm hearing voices in my head? Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sent Euphrosine of Polotsk heard voices too, and she found in a monastery and churches and things. I heard voices too. Uh, well, could have been voices. I wouldn't swear to it though. Look, fellas, I was standing right here and I didn't hear a thing. Do you take me for a madman? Whatever you are, I want to know what you're doing under my daughter's window and who was talking to her. I heard it clear as day. Good neighbour, it can't be denied that old age dulls a man's ears. I'm here alone, praying for the souls of the good people resting in the cemetery. I've nothing to do with your daughter. Hmm, that voice sounded different to yours though. But where did he get to? You must have seen him. Unless... Unless you're covering for him. What? You don't love me? No. And I told you, get out! Well, how about a kiss at least? Out, out, out! Uh... Ya sem skutni hori, skutni hori, kodel nikov sin. What the fuck are you playing at? My patience is wearing thin. Jesus, stop your damn screeching! Christ almighty! Let's go, fellas. This one ain't right in the head. The guards will have him for screeching after curfew. Let's not get mixed up in it. But if I ever see you here again, I'll beat some sense into your idiot skull. How did it go with Carolina Sands? It was a disaster, Henry. A disaster. How come? Didn't your recitation do the trick? What kind of nonsense were you feeding me? Carolina thought I was a thief breaking in to rob the place. I tried to explain, but she wouldn't listen. She told me to get out or she'd call her father. Oh, you're lucky I managed to keep him busy. Only now he thinks I'm the village idiot. Well, thanks for that, at least. Anyway... Carolina slammed the door in my face, so I suppose I'll have to look elsewhere for the love of my life. Oh, back to writing love letters. To hell with love letters. Imagine. That silly goose couldn't even read. Ah, shame. She missed out on something very rare. Indeed. <laughs> Here's the letter, Henry. Read it. At least you're capable of appreciating my literary talent. Read and learn from a poet. Good luck, then.